Hello, this is Tov from Trifo Production with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can add droplets to any model in Blender by using the droplet generator add-on. Uh, now, this add-on isn't free. You'd have to pay for it, but for the price, it's not that bad. Uh, so Blender 3.0 and above, I'm using 3.4 myself. And I'll leave a link of it uh, below the video so you can download yourselves and check it out. But the installation process is still the same. Go to Edit. Preferences, Install, navigate to where you've downloaded onto your system, click on Install Add-on. And once you've done that, let me type it in, drop, put a check in the box and it activates it. And it'll be on the right hand side of your UI, which is right here, it has two buttons, add droplets, and you can draw custom droplets also. We're going to keep our cube here and use this as part of our model or part of the example of our model for this tutorial. And to add droplets, all you have to do is click on the add droplets button and there you go. But looking at it, you don't see any droplets and that's because the droplets are so small that you have to kind of increase them. And to find the parameters for the add-on, they're in the modifier stagger on this side. So left click on this wrench Let's expand this out and we're going to increase the scale. Click on the scale uh, option here. Click in there and type in a larger number. I'm going to type in 15 myself. Enter. When we've done that, we can see that we have droplets on our cube. Now the modifier stacker has the settings for the distribution, long droplets. It's got custom long droplets, big droplets, medium droplets, small droplets, advanced and uh, that's pretty much it. So you can customize the droplets to your desire, heart's desire, so to speak, as much as possible, but still just kind of be careful when you change some of the parameters because it can give you some kind of strange results. Uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to minimize the droplets. The density now is 500. Let's change this down to, let's say 100. Enter. That way it doesn't use, slow down our user interface at all. Now you can uh, increase the max droplets, the noise, the noise scale, the subdivisions also. The subdivisions uh, help to make the droplets look smoother. So when you zoom in, you can see that they're not all that smooth. But if you increase the smoothness of the subdivision or the subdivide, it gets smoother. But remember, when you do that, when you have a lot of droplets and you try to make it smoother by increasing the subdivisions, it could cause, um, you know, a longer time when it comes to rendering. But that's up to you when you do a close-up. It's good to smooth it out. When you're far away from the uh, model with the droplets, keep it at zero. That's, that's best. Now, the seed, that pretty much just, uh, as I've said before in other tutorials, when you ever see seed in Blender, it just means the arrangement of... Uh, the drop the models or whatever it is that's being displayed it just changes the arrangement when it comes to the seed. So when I click on the seed, it just changes the, the display of the droplets on the model. That's all it does pretty much. So you can just toggle through to see which display works best for you. Now the lawn droplets, it's an on and off option here. When it says zero, the lawn droplets are off. Uh, click up to one, it adds droplets to it. Also be a little bit careful with the long droplets because as you can see up here, you have some uh, strangeness happening here at the top of our cube with a droplet, a long droplet kind of extending way out. Uh, once again, you can change the seed to get better results. And once we've changed the seed, it's kind of uh, caused that to disappear and cause it to reappear here at the bottom. But this isn't really a problem here. I mean, if you have, um, a cube like this sitting on top of something flat, you're going to have droplets kind of trickling out from the side too, so that's not really that big of an issue. Uh, now with the long droplets, you can animate it. Uh, you can animate it on the timeline. All you have to do is uh, click on this dot here, and it adds a keyframe there. Move down your timeline, increase the size here, click on that uh, once again, and it'll add another keyframe. That this is how you animate uh, those long droplets uh, in your scene. Now we're going to move over to uh, drawing droplets 
onto our mesh, which is good for curved models. Uh, long droplets that are generated by the add-on itself don't work well on uh, curved surfaces. I'll give you an example of that after I draw, show you how to use the draw custom droplet option uh, for the add-on. So to draw a droplet, let's click on draw. It turns our uh, cursor or arrow to a pen tool. You can just draw and that's it. And press tab because right now uh, it's in edit mode. If you press tab, it goes back into uh, object mode. Now you really can't see what you've drawn. You can see this little squiggly line there, but if we left click on our cube and we scroll down to custom long droplets, uh, we have to turn it on first. So click on that to turn to one, now it's on. But you still don't really see any difference there. You'd have to uh, tell the add-on where the curve is. In order to do that, you click in here, in this uh, space here, custom droplet and now that now the add-on knows that there's a drawn custom droplet on it's on the object here but you still really can't see it in order to see it even more I mean there's a lot of steps for this increase the radius left click in there and let's press 5 enter and now it's made our droplet a little bit thicker so we can kind of crank this up a little bit more so we can see the droplet a little bit better left click in there and again let's type in 10 enter and now it's made the droplets visible to the eye. And it's the same thing when it comes to animating it. Uh, just set the keyframes here. Uh, press that when it's on a certain number in your keyframe. Turns that into a diamond, increase the parameter, move down your timeline, click the diamond again, and you'll have the droplets moving down the cube. Now, as I mentioned before, Curved droplets are best used on curved surfaces when it comes to drawing them. That's the best way to do it. Do not use the um, option when it comes to generating droplets automatically with the add-on. Let me show you what I mean. Let's open up a new. Let's not open up a new scene this time. Let's just press delete on our keyboard. Actually, let's open up a new scene because, like I said before, when you use add-on, sometimes it's best to start fresh to avoid any kind of issues. So let's go to File, New, General, Don't Save. Let's get rid of our cube here. Shift A, we're going to use Suzanne, Monkey. Scroll up on our mouse wheel, go to our modifier stack. Add a modifier, let's make it a little bit smooth. Subdivision surface, crank that up to two. The drop down menu, press apply. And we're going to open up our add on again. So we're going to do add droplets on her. Once again, in order to see the droplets, we're going to have to increase the size. I'm going to type in 15 here, enter. And then once again, we're going to turn on the uh, long droplets and see what happens. And now you can see what I mean by it having issues when it comes to the add-on actually creating the droplets for you. You have this streak here of a long droplet coming down on that side and on this side. So that's why you shouldn't use the long droplets uh, option for curved surfaces. Use the draw custom droplets. So you can just draw curved droplets onto the surface of the model. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out with this add-on is the uh, fact that the droplets are already uh, textured. And not only that, but they have like micro, micro bubbles in the uh, droplets to make it look like actual water, which is kind of impressive to me. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So let me go to, let's give Suzanne a color here. Let's uh, color her, give her a color, a texture. Hopefully this doesn't crash. Okay, there we go. And we're going to turn it to red. Okay. Um... Let's go up to our world settings and change the, the brightness of our environments. Turn that to a bluish color. And we're going to go to our render settings. Turn to cycles, GPU. And I'm going to position her so we can see, scroll up on our mouse wheel to see the, this droplet here. Let me change that, the viewport to uh, cycles. 
And if you look look at how that looks realistic, when it comes to real water, this is how a droplet actually looks. You can see like microscopic, uh, I guess you can call them bubbles or microscopic um, fracturing of the light when it comes to the droplet itself. And this is uh, by the, this is a good deal by the developer paying close attention to detail. So like I said before, this is something that's pretty impressive that I like about the add-on myself is the attention to detail when it comes to the texture of the droplet. So besides the, you know, kind of strange layout of the long droplets on some of the models, this is a pretty good add-on. And it'll save a lot of time in terms of rendering droplets or trying to make the droplets yourself on your models. It saved you quite a bit of time. And that's today's Blender Quick Tip. And, hopeful, and I hope this was helpful for those of you who have watched. And once again, remember to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.